Would you believe that once again I have something about centaurs to bring to your attention? Once again, we have to talk about something. Remember this? He's fine. And this? What clothes do they wear? And this? How do they sleep? Do they just flop? If you remember all of those things, this video is for you. So essentially, I realized that I brought a lot of problems about centaurs to everyone's attention, but I offered no solutions. I'm here to apologize about that, because I believe that if you are here to point out problems, it is also your responsibility to present solutions. I went through all of those videos, wrote down every point that I made, and came up with a solution for each of them. And once again, I made a list. First of all, let's start at the bare bones of the problem. Kind of a fun plan, whereas I didn't think about it. Because we're talking about the skeleton. The skeleton is literally the most annoying part of centaurs. Because you have essentially your human half, your horse half, and then some kind of muddle in the middle. I pointed this out last time. Usually there's just a right angle in the spine, just straight up bone on bone. The horse's neck, which is where the centaur's torso is, the neck is supposed to go like this. And with a right angle in his spine, a centaur cannot do that. So first of all, I present to you this shape. This shape to the skeleton actually is based on a horse skeleton. Sorry if you've never seen a horse skeleton before either, but this is what they look like. And that opening at the front of the hip is one of the things that lets them lower their head down. The other fix I found for the bending issue is actually not a bone thing, it's a posture thing. Did you ever go to a natural science museum and see a picture of a giraffe drinking water? That is the solution I present to you for centaurs trying to reach things that are on the ground. Basically what a giraffe does is just to spread its front legs really wide apart and stretch down because they, like a centaur, have so much height that reaching the ground is difficult. So say a centaur were to just reach out wide, plant their feet really strong, and then they can lower their torso down more efficiently. Since they're so tall, they're also sentient beings, so they're probably not building things that are low to the ground that they need to reach because they know better. They know how they work and they're going to know they shouldn't build things that are that close to the ground. But say they drop something, that's probably how they would pick up their pen if they dropped it. Basically on the skeleton, good skeleton, bad skeleton. Solutions. Now we get to the clothes. This is my favorite point out of the entire video. I love talking about centaur clothes. I have great passions about centaur clothes. I was arguing with my siblings this morning about centaur clothes while I was writing notes for this. Now I've gone and scavenged the internet to show you what I think are good examples of how to dress a centaur. But first let's go over what I consider to be a bad way of clothing a centaur. Under no circumstances. No circumstances. Do I want to see your centaurs dressed only on the torso and nowhere else? You know why? Because if you think about it, that's weird. Why on earth would I wear just a shirt with nothing covering the rest of me? That would be so weird, so risque, not allowed. So why on earth wouldn't they clothe the rest of them? Good rule of thumb is to remember that a centaur is not 50% horse, 50% human. It is 100% centaur. So you gotta treat it like it's a whole unit. And as a whole unit, their clothes are probably going to affect more than just their upper torso. Something that made me really mad, and also part of the reason why I decided to make this video now, the freaking centaur from the Percy Jackson show. I didn't even watch that show. My sister paused the show watching it so that she could show me the atrocity that had appeared in front of her eyes. There's more than one reason why that design is bad, but the important one we're talking about here is the way they dressed him. He is very well dressed, only for his human torso. If any man cares that much about how he's dressed, he is going to go for more than just a suit coat. So I consider upper half only centaur dressing to be bad dressing. However, I would say that the good way of dressing them is at the bare minimum to dress their human torso, cover a little bit of the front horse hips, and then maybe involve like a matching saddlebag or leg warmers, especially since leg warmers is something you actually use on real horses, so it adds a tie into the real world and something for your audience to recognize. Other good examples are gonna pop up on the screen because I very much did ransack Pinterest for good ideas before I started this video, but essentially think big, give them full outfits. I've seen bustles, I loved the bustles, I've seen as much as giving them entire saddlebags over most of them, which is something that I stole for my centaurs because my centaurs are very scholarly and they would need to be able to carry around a lot of books and paper and knowledge with them wherever they go, be able to study. Personally, for my centaurs, they just wear something that I've only drawn once, unfortunately, and I drew it badly, but essentially they wear kind of like a robe sort of situation that also carries over onto their horseback half 
as kind of like a saddle blanket shape, which conveniently also is going to be something that hangs well on a hanger in a closet. Because if you think about it, these are also clothes that they're just going to have in their closet, in their wardrobe, in a chest. You have to think about how these things are going to fold and bend. I do not recommend 100% dressing a centaur, just because it looks weird. And especially if you're going for a visual medium, it makes it a lot harder for the audience to identify, oh, that's a centaur. It just looks like a shape covered in armor from head to toe. And it doesn't give you the chance to really let the fantasy creature aspect shine on that. I also have a beloved friend, Ariel, who saw my centaur pants video and literally drew me up concept art on other ways centaurs could wear clothes. Bless her, she created this beautiful dress shape. She also recommended suspenders to keep their garments in place. And she's just a genius and such a gem for gifting me that art. And those drawings are a prized possession of mine, truly. So now let's talk about height. The height mare, as I referred to it in my Instagram reels. I'm sorry for that pun, but I just love it so much. I think it's so funny. <laughs> Picture a horse, which is like five feet tall at its back, standard, um, and then throw a human torso on top of it, which is like an extra three feet at least. You now have a 10 foot creature. That seems a little bit too big for my taste, especially since your characters are literally going to be looking at the centaur characters like this. Hey, what's up, Chad? I just consider that to be way too tall unless you're going for some kind of like deity equivalent mega beast. The other problem is that you could try to make them human height, make them like six, seven feet tall, but you're probably going to have to use a pony body, in which case their horseback is actually going to be much lower than the rest of your characters and their height, and it's, it's just going to look wacky. I just try to find a happy medium in the middle that's really the best situation I can offer you, but please just accept that your centaur characters are probably going to be a lot taller than the rest of your other cast. Also, if you're doing this in a visual medium, I am begging you to please pay attention to the scale of the human body, to the horse body. That's another thing that Percy Jackson really made me mad on, because the place where the human hips would be should really align to the place where the horse front hips are, and he's just kind of doing this, and I'm not a fan of that. It looks wacky and also his human torso is too tall, it doesn't end in the right place, and just in general he he looks like a man and a horse shoved together, you know what I'm saying? However, that's just my personal preference. If you like the way the centaur looks from Percy Jackson, you're just wrong. Now, let's take a second to talk about houses. Housing and doorways and stairs and things are actually something that weighed very heavily on my mind while I was writing my series because my centaurs travel a lot, and they go and visit other people a lot, and they need to stay as guests in other people's houses, and it occurred to me they're probably not going to be able to climb stairs, because it's just hugely impractical for a horse to try to climb a whole bunch of stairs. So what I did was employ ramps in a lot of places, or make things that were just wide. Single levels, ground level houses, all of those things are pretty easy fixes. You can also make very large doorways, and I also recommend giving your houses a big floor plan, kind of think like a stable, because you're using a big creature and trying to put him in a small space is not really going to work for that. So in my centaur houses, I use very minimal furniture to try to give them a lot of space to move around in, to walk around in, to lie down on the floor, whatever they want to do, and give them like a few very simple pieces of furniture, such as we talked about them being scholarly, they have desks, they often have bookshelves. Um, and pretty generally they'll have a lot of chairs to sit down in chaise lounges because their bodies are so big and it's also a very practical way for them to lie down. They can literally just climb up on top of it. For mine, they really look like a kind of a combination between a humanized stable and kind of a big camping tent because there's so much hanging and openness and like five pieces of furniture per room. Now let's just talk about the nature of centaurs on the whole. Generally, I have noticed that there's this duality to centaurs, and this is really not so much advice as just trying to broaden the box that we put centaurs in if we're really insisting on using these absolutely cursed creatures. I would love to expand this box that we put the centaurs in, because there seems to be this duality of centaurs are either these warlike, epic, archer kind of situations, or they are scholarly and quiet and monkish, kind of. Of course, I lean into the scholarly camp, as we've discussed, but at the same time, there's so much expansion for this. There are so many places that centaurs could fit. They could be explorers. I think they're very well suited to be explorers because they can travel so far so quickly. They can carry so many supplies. They could be courtiers, some of the very beautiful clothing art that I found 
made them into royalty, made them into members of the court, and they were beautiful. And I realized we never see centaurs in those positions. I'm over here talking about it like it's fantasy racism or something. <laughs> I think if you were in more of an urban fantasy setting, I would say the centaurs are probably well, very well suited to building things, to being construction people, because they have the height, they have the strength, they can carry things. If you have elevators, they don't have to worry about the stairs situation. Visually, it could be very funny to have them be like hand cart drivers because they're already mostly horse. So just picking up the handles of a hand cart and racing through the city would be entertaining but also useful. And it is controversial but I did find it very unique that in the Ill Enchanted book by Gail Carson Levine, in there her centaurs are actually not sentient creatures. They're closer to being like a pet, not really livestock but like a, a pet domestic animal kind of thing. They don't have their own intelligence, they're very sweet, but they're kept as pets by royalty. Which since they're half horse, give or take, is an interesting take to put on it. And it is controversial, but I do like that it's a unique take on it. But really, for centaur variety, I just want to see people always think outside of the box, think outside of the tropes that have already been presented to them, come up with original, beautiful ideas, really bring them to life, really go crazy. And with that, that's the end of all my fixes. <laughs> that is all that I have. But I am always open to making more videos, always open to thinking of new things because I love to create ideas and, and fixes and help people brainstorm and plot. And there's just so many things about storytelling that make me so excited. So please, if you've got more questions that I didn't answer, or if you have further problems that also need help, I am 100% here. I am always answering comments. I am always on my Instagram, just talking in my DMs and going all over my stories. And I would love to be able to help you out with your centaurs if you are also subscribing to this cursed, very wacky fantasy creature. I am open to helping you fix that if you have chosen to take such a terrible path as I. So. With that, you have a great day. Good night.